Now these kind of outputs I think are, are really, really powerful considering how much work has gone into this, this bot. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created an AI version of Alex Formozzi by taking hundreds of transcripts from his podcast and feeding it into a chat bot and how you can take this exact same application that I've built and template it and start to build your own AI personalities for yourself for personal and business use. Now before we actually jump into the code editor and start to see this thing in action, I thought I'd give you guys a quick high level overview of how these kind of applications work. So what I've built here is actually called a custom knowledge chatbot, not to be confused with training your own model, which is what a lot of people think. Oh, I want to train a model on my own data. That's not what we're doing. And that's not what people do in a lot of cases with LLM applications currently. So the easiest way to break down a custom knowledge chatbot is into the few components that it takes. So the first component is going to be the custom knowledge base. So what I'm doing in this project is taking a bunch of information from Alex and Mozzie's podcast, and I'm putting it into this custom knowledge base that our chatbot is going to have access to. What happens when a user queries it, puts in a question, say, I'm asking a question about how to build a better sales process. We are going to take what the user has queried. We are going to essentially search our database of all the information from the transcripts. We're going to search for anything that's similar to what I've asked about the sales process. And then our vector database is going to retrieve, say three to five different chunks of text, which are most similar to what we're asking about. It's going to pull that information out of the database. And then it's going to match that with the user input. So can you give me a plan about my sales process? And then we're going to get a large language model like GPT 3.5 Turbo or GPT-4, and we're going to say, okay, can you answer this user's question with the context that we've just retrieved from the knowledge base? So an easy way of understanding this that I always tell my clients is that these custom knowledge chatbot systems allow you to go from say 100,000 tokens of data, and then when the user queries, you're able to pick out only the most relevant parts to that query out of the hundreds of thousands of tokens of data. So by creating a system like this, when the user queries, we can have hundreds of thousands of documents or pages when the user queries the chatbot, we're only going to retrieve a couple different pieces of that information that are most relevant to the query. So we essentially filter down to only what's most relevant to the user. And we use that information to send to our LLM like the ChatGPT API. And then we answer the question given that context and what they asked originally. So with that out of the way, we can jump into the code here. And I'm going to give you guys a very high level sort of skim over the code here. I'm not going to do a full coding breakdown tutorial here. Maybe I'll do that in another video if you guys want it. But all of this code is going to be available on GitHub if you want to clone it if you want to fork it and, and leave a star if you, if you feel like it so we're going to jump into this and i'm going to break down very quickly how it works so the first step in actually building one of these applications is to do what's called a document pipeline and this is essentially how are you going to take your raw data or in my case youtube videos or a podcast and how am i going to bridge that what are the processes that i'm going to take in order to get it chopped up in the way i want the right information put into the metadata and then i'm going to send that off to my vector database which i'm going to be using pinecone so from transcript to vectorized data in my database, that's sort of the distance that the document pipeline covers. Now for the purposes of this video, I don't have time to go through my entire document pipeline and show you things under the hood, but if you guys want to see that in another video, please let me know down below because this is a pretty key part that I feel like you guys could get some value out of. I just don't wanna drag this thing out too much for the, the people who aren't necessarily that technical. So just from a high level, we have these three different notebooks here that I've created, which is one that did the transcription, the second one that is my data pipeline, and the third that is the indexing notebook that essentially takes that data and puts into the PyCon database. Now I did this through the podcast application. I went to see all, and then I just downloaded a whole bunch here. I got up to about 160 downloads. So the current version of the Homozi GPT is using 163 podcast transcripts. So that can continue to be added to. And I found the more, the more information that I add, the, the better the retrieval becomes because there's more similarity, etc. But essentially, the more that I add in, that seems to be getting better, which is probably how you expect it to go. But downloaded all of those podcasts, then you're able to actually find them locally on your computer where they're stored, which Apple probably doesn't want you to do, but you can find them. And I dragged them all over into this folder called podcast. So I have 100 plus audio files of all of the different podcasts that I downloaded. And then I had to essentially transcribe those using the Whisper APIs. So basically this transcription notebook just took in the MP3 files, chopped them up into sizes that were okay for the Whisper API. I sent it off to OpenAI's Whisper API and got it transcribed very, very cheaply, which is good. I think it's about a sixth of a cent per minute. So the output of that was going to be a text file based on every podcast. So for every MP3 file, I now had a .text file that I was able to use in the next part of the pipeline. Now the next step was to take all of those text files that I'd gotten and prepare them to be put into the index. So I have this data pipeline file and essentially I go through here and I chunk it up into different sizes. So I think I went for about 512 tokens. And so every single piece of data was around 512 or less so that I could take all of those chunks and then put them into the vector database one by one. Now, after 
after chunking everything up, I got a massive data frame that was filled with information like this. So as you can see here, this is one transcript that has been split up into multiple different things. So all of them have their token counts around 500 or less. So the chunking has worked correctly. I've broken down what was probably 10,000 tokens of this attention to new oil, I think is the name of it. And I've chopped that into multiple different parts of that are just 500 tokens each. And now there's all ready to be individually put into the vector database. With that all done, I was able to save it to a CSV here. And then I was going to go over to my indexing. So this is the indexing notebook that I created. Essentially what we do is take all of those chunks that we've created in each row of the CSV. We're going to embed the data in that and then we're going to insert that into the Pinecone database. So I won't bore you with the details. Essentially I just read in the CSV. I do a bunch, a little bit more manipulation of the data. And then I was able to put that all into my Pinecone database and save that index ready for later recall with NVS code and within the app that you're going to see now. So with the data pipeline out of the way, we can now jump into the app that allows you to interact with that. So this app is responsible for essentially taking in user input and then querying the index we've just created, pulling back similar results, combining those two together and then giving the response and then also creating a, a sort of nice ish UI for it so that we're able to, to chat to it in a visual way. Now to keep this short and sweet and because I know most of you guys are probably just going to download this, change out your API keys, etc., and try this on your own data. What I can show you here is essentially those parts. Here you need to go into the .env file up here, which you're going to need to create yourself. On GitHub, this .env file will not be there. What you need to do is right click, go new file and go .env. And then you're going to need to create these variables. You can see it in here, actually I'll blur these out. Essentially, you're going to need to write this and go equals and then put it in as strings. So all of these different things, open AI API key, then Pinecone API key, Pinecone index name, Pinecone environment, and the Pinecone endpoint. So all that info you're going to need to put in yourself, but once you have that set up, in here it should be importing it all correctly. And here we have the sort of core functionality of the app, which is to, one of them is to get the embedding. So what's going to happen when the user queries the app, we're going to put it through this function here, which is going to return the open AI embeddings using the ADA002 model. Once we have those embeddings of the user query, we can pass it off to the semantic search. That's going to search our Pinecone database for things that are similar to what the users asked for. It can be three different chunks. It can be five different chunks. You're able to specify it with this top K parameter. But that's essentially the, the meat and potatoes of the application. Then what we go through to is our app.py. And here, when a user sends a message, it triggers this generate response. Now, if you're not familiar with Streamlit, here's a quick crash course. The main action of this app is going on down here. So this is the, the text input, essentially where the user is going to be entering their question. So this st.text input, which is a Streamlit text input. This is the on change function, the generate response. So this is essentially on submit. When they submit their question, this is going to trigger this function here, which is this big boy right here. So the generate response function is going to generate a response from the user prompt. So the main action going on here is the semantic search function. So when we take in the prompt from the user, which is available here, this st.sessionState.prompt, and then top K, as I mentioned before, is the number of chunks that we want to retrieve. So we want to retrieve three different chunks from this. We're going to take the user prompt. We're going to pass it to our semantic search function. It's going to embed the user query. It's going to query our vector database with those embeddings. And it's going to return the three most similar chunks related to the query. So say using the sales example again, I ask, well, how can I build a sales funnel? Or what's, what are some tips on building my sales process out? It's going to embed that. It's going to search for essentially anything to do with sales in the vector database. And it's going to pull the top K or the top three, which we've inserted in here. It's going to pull three similar chunks back and then save it in the search results variable. And then in order to combine the context that we've just gotten from our vector database with the user query, we're using a prompt template here. So what we have is the user query. This is what I've called the human template. And this is going to contain the context that we've just received from the database and the user query. So this is what we're essentially submitting to the language model. Here is the user query. Here are the relevant transcript snippets. Now above you can see a system message. If you're not familiar with how these work, this is one of the things that you can send off to open AI chat completion endpoints in the system message is essentially setting the mode or setting the tone of the bot. So here I've put in UI Alex Homozzi, a successful entrepreneur, da la la. You have access to transcripts. Be aware that transcripts may not always be relevant to the query. You need to analyze each of them carefully, da la la. So now playing around with this prompt is actually one of the highest leverage tasks that you could do because a few small changes in this can completely change the output of the bot. So there is a lot of experimentation to be done that I haven't really done at this stage. But if you guys want me to continue to work on this bot, I could definitely play around with the this, this system message more. I've got a ton of other features that I think I could build into it, but that'll all depend on if you guys are interested in it and want to see me continue to work on this. Of course, it's all gonna be available on GitHub so I can continue to commit, continue to add more stuff to it over time. The last thing to do is to combine the user query with the context that we just created. Here we can see the context that we received from the search results. And then we're going to what I call construct messages. So this is going to essentially handle some of the chat history and make sure that we're always keeping a running chat history going. 
don't need to look into that too much but it works trust me so what we're going to do is create those that those messages and then we're going to send off the messages to the open ai chat completions endpoint with the gpt 3.5 model and we're going to be putting in those messages that i generated into the messages variable for the api call here i'm using the gpt 3.5 turbo model and it, it's just really quick and snappy for these kind of chatbot applications so that's what i'm liking using at the moment but essentially we're going to be catching this response saving it as bot response and then we're going to be printing that to the ui so i think that's a good enough rundown i hope you guys can sort of figure out what we're doing here but now we can jump into actually seeing this in action and i can show you some of the outputs that we can get from it to run streamlit apps all you need to do is type streamlit run app.py now we have homozy gpt this is what a typical streamlit ui looks like so here we can go i found that the really interesting use case for this kind of bot is to ask it for sort of business plans and specific outputs, not just asking questions. Hey, how do I do this or this? Actually putting a little bit of context in there and saying, write me a plan or give me a guide. So I've got here, I have a lawn mowing company that's doing $10,000 per month. Write me a digital marketing plan on how I can get more leads and grow my business. And so what this is doing, it's taking that query that I've just given it, it's embedding it with the same embedding model that we've put all of our chunks into our vector database with. It's going to take that embedding, which is just a bunch of numbers, and then essentially searching for the most similar numbers in the database and it's going to retrieve three different chunks that are most similar to that it's going to put that into that prompt template and it's going to take the query that i just put in and now it's going to try to answer the query with the information from the database so what have we got and so here we can see a little bit of errors with the prompting this is what i probably need to try and iron out over time but based on transcripts first step in your digital marketing plan should be analyze your pricing offer cost of acquisition da, 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 da. so we've got a pretty decent response from mozzie gpt already here you can see talking about 30 day cash high ticket premium offering focus on brand building rather than a direct response so not very specific i did ask for a plan now i thought i'd drill a little bit deeper and say okay give me a detailed digital marketing plan for my lawn mowing business with the aim of brand building, not direct response. What kind of content and ads should I be creating? To build your brand over the long term, it's important to focus on creating high quality content, establishing thought leadership in your industry and leveraging social media to expand your reach. Now, I'll let you guys pause this for a second and have a read. Now these kind of outputs I think are, are really, really powerful considering how much work has gone into this, this bot and you can only imagine how good they could get if you continue to add more and more context, play with more and more prompting. And I think here, things like email marketing, developing a newsletter, leverage social media, develop a content marketing strategy for, for someone who's not necessarily that clued up when it comes to digital strategy, having a bot like this to chat to could be pretty, pretty valuable. I've yet to really test it on how granular you can get with it. So if I provide a ton of information about the business, how good he could respond, say I was to ask, okay, I need a content marketing strategy for my lawn mowing business. We do this, 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 provide as much content and then ask for a really granular plan. I think if you guys can, can download this and, and start playing around with it and let me know how good you can get the responses and what sort of outcomes you are getting, that would be really, really helpful. And if you want to contribute on GitHub, I'd really appreciate that too. Given that I've put 163 podcasts in already and it seems to have a very flexible understanding of Mozzie's sort of knowledge and what he talks about often. So here I've gone a little bit deeper and I've said, okay, should I base the content marketing around me personally or around the company? So he's mentioning a digital content marketing strategy here. And he says, based on the transcripts, which is, I need to get that bit bug ironed out, but my recommendation will be to focus on building the brand of your company rather than building around you personally, da 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 da, -da. And educational content, interactive content, customer success stories. So this is all, all pretty solid business advice, I'd say, in terms of digital marketing. It could definitely do that, and I think it's pulling from the knowledge base in the right way. And this is only using 3.5 Turbo, so I've tried with GPT-4, but I don't think the sort of trade-off between speed and, and reasoning and, and intelligence is, is really worth it at the moment. I thought I'd give you one more example of this thing in action. Now, these are not scripted. I haven't tested these responses or anything. Mozzie talks a lot about 20-year-old men and 20-year-old people and how you can make the most out of your 20s and sort of more of a life coach rather than a business coach. So I've decided to go a little bit personal with it. I've said, I'm a 22-year-old entrepreneur. What should I be focusing on in order to maximize my long-term success? Let's see what he says. I've got back a pretty good response from Alex talking about how I should focus on the customer, invest in myself, build passive streams of income, embrace constraints. I thought it was an interesting one talking about rather than changing the business just to challenge yourself, do sort of micro challenges within the business to not get distracted from the big task that you're sort of doing the reps on. So I think it's very interesting. Now, just to be clear, guys, this is a V1 product. This is the most basic thing that I could get up and was happy showing you guys on YouTube. I think there's a lot more stuff that could be done with this. I think you could do deep fakes. You could do voice generation. You could do, I could speak to it and it could reply to me like that. So there's also all sorts of things to be done in terms of how this chat function interacts because this is always querying the customology 
knowledge base every single time I message it when you can essentially set it up so that it only queries the knowledge base when it's needed and then otherwise it can just use the information that's already in the chat history. So don't want to get too, too stuck in the weeds there, but there's so much that, that we could do with this. And if you guys want to contribute, the GitHub link is going to be in the description. So you can either go down there and clone it and start to do some work on it and, and come up with improvements on the Hormozzi GPT itself, or you can use it for your own applications and maybe you have a coaching business. Maybe you want to create an artificial version of yourself or one of your clients. This can all be done using this framework that I provided. The only thing missing for you is that data pipeline side of things. So you're going to need to prepare your own data and create your own Pinecone index. And then as you can see in the .env files, you need to change the index name, da, 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 da. so you can switch it over to another one. But if you guys would like me to make an entire video on how I did the document pipeline for this chatbot and how I took the transcripts, transcribed them, chopped them up and put them into the, the Vic database, I can definitely do that. Just please let me know down below and I can do a part two on the Swamazi GPT. So that about wraps it up for the video, guys. If you have any questions, then please leave them down in the comments below. I'll be answering as many as I can. And as always, if this has lit up any light bulbs in your head and you want to reach out to me as a consultant, have a chat about some of your ideas or potentially work with my development company in terms of getting this built out, then you can reach me as a consultant in the description. Let's have a chat and get something built. If you've enjoyed the video and want to support me making more stuff like this, please head down below, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more. And while you're down there, feel free to sign up to my AI newsletter and join my AI entrepreneurship discord. That's all for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.